Welcome to the Over 40 Alpha Podcast with your host, Funk Roberts. Men over 40, listen up. Are you, are you sick and tired of struggling with consistency, struggling to stay motivated with your workouts, with your nutrition, with, with your health and fitness journey? Are you one of those people who can start something, you know, get some great results, and then all of a sudden you fall off? And you're constantly starting and stopping. You have problems staying motivated to work out, to stay with your nutrition. You have no motivation. You have no consistency. Well, today in this podcast episode, I'm going to tell you the number one reason why you can't get motivated, why you don't have consistency. But I'm also going to give you the solution. Are you ready? Let's get started. Are you a man in your 40s, 50s, 60s, or beyond tired of struggling with your health and fitness? Do you feel like you're wrestling a gorilla when it comes to losing weight, burning belly fat, increasing strength, your diet and nutrition, or just reclaiming your youthful vigor? What if I told you you're not alone and there's a solution waiting for you? That's right. My Over 40 Alpha Workout Nutrition and Brotherhood program specifically designed for men over 40, is that solution. This isn't just a program. It's a revolution. It's a worldwide brotherhood of over 16,000 men, just like you, turning their lives around one rep at a time, one meal at a time, and one day at a time. And the programs designed by me, Funk Roberts, this program combines follow-along workouts, nutritional guidance, and an unshakable brotherhood. It's like having a personal coach right in your own home. And with a trust pilot score of 4.9, we're not just talking the talk, we're walking the walk. As I mentioned before, the workouts are followable. So you're going to be training right beside me as I guide you through each exercise, motivate you, coach you, train right beside you. I'm going to be sweating along with you. And of course, with every training session, you get warm ups, you get Avancore finishers, and you get stretches to ensure you have everything you need to get fit. You're going to burn belly fat. You're going to finally build muscle. And the best news is you can do these workouts in the comfort of your own home with dumbbells, or you can also use the body weight versions of each training program. With 36 phases, there's three years of progressive programming, targeting fat burning, targeting muscle building, targeting strength increase, and targeting everything you need to get in the best shape of your life and have a sustainable program for three years. Now, let's back up for a second because you're probably asking me about nutrition and I'm glad you asked because I'll tell you what to eat. I'll tell you when to eat and how much to eat and what foods to stay away from. You see, I created a meal plan that you can cook meals and you can have food that tastes delicious. They're called our alpha meals. And not only are they going to taste great, but they're also going to fuel your body and balance your hormones. And we also cover recovery routines because let's face it, as we get older, we have pain, we have tightness, we have, you know, we're coming back from injuries that we sustained when we're younger. So with routines such as our yoga routines, mobility routines, everything to help you stay injury-free and manage existing pain. Add to that sleep tips and tricks, plus my high quality mindset coaching to give you that unwavering self-motivation and discipline so you can stay on track with your program. But the biggest and most powerful thing we have in my over 40 alpha program is the alpha brotherhood, our private Facebook group. It's a support group of over thousand men from all over the world getting fit. We don't talk religion. We don't talk politics or pop culture. We're here to support. We're here to motivate. We're here to keep each other accountable all on our fitness journey without any judgment. Just a brotherhood of healthy and fit men getting it done. Listen, as men, we're put on this earth to provide, to protect, and to procreate. And to take time, we need to take that time to control our health and our fitness. So if you're ready to embark on this journey, go to over40alpha.com and start this journey for just $1. That's right. $1 for the first 30 days, which is my fat loss shred program. You can get access to everything, access to my weekly coaching, access to the brotherhood, the Facebook group, access to all of the follow along workouts. And of course, I'm going to guide you because 
I know that when you first start a program, it can be overwhelming. So for $1, go to over40alpha.com and start your journey for the first 30 days. That's over40alpha.com, $1 for 30 days, and I'll see you on the other side. Let's create a healthier, stronger version of yourself, and let's do that together. Get it done. What's going on, my fellow Over 40 Alpha brothers? Uh, today in this episode, we are going to talk about that number one reason why you can't stay motivated and consistent in your workouts. You know, the other day I, uh, I sent out a, a, a survey to my list. I sent out a survey to see what are their number one struggles? What are their barriers when it comes to health and fitness? An overwhelming feedback of staying consistent, being motivated. You know, the questions, Funk, how do I stay motivated? How do I, you know, I, I have trouble starting and stopping. I can never, you know, get get that consistency or get that that momentum to keep me on a program so I can get results. And that's, that. you're not alone. You know, you're not alone. I've, I've heard that throughout my entire life, literally. As an athlete, I heard it with my work. I heard at my work, you know, people having problems staying motivated to get their work done, um, you know, only just skating by, you know, just kind of getting by as opposed to kind of overachieving, you know, people, people who, who you know, in, in, my, in my entrepreneur world, people, you know, having problems kind of, I just can't get motivated to do this and do that. How come you get so much stuff done? You know, in school, you know, same thing, man. How do you stay motivated to like study all the time and do this and do that? Like, like it's, it's been an ongoing thing for my entire life that I've heard, but there is one th reason why you can't do that. And, um, you can solve it, which is the biggest thing you can solve it. You know, you probably heard the, the phrase knowledge is power, right? Like, and, and it does hold some truth. Knowledge is, is, is power, but knowledge isn't power enough because you'll, you know, you know, let's say you join a workout, you join the over 40 alpha brotherhood, right? You join my program over 40 alpha.com. You join the program. You have knowledge. Now you have workouts, you have nutrition, you have recovery, like mobility stuff. You, you have sleep tips, you get, uh, you know, follow along workouts. So all you have to do is literally, literally just click play and I'm there to, to work out with you. You have a Facebook brotherhood of 3000 plus guys who, um, literally are always on there helping each other, staying motive, uh, accountable. So you have accountability. I send daily accountability emails because people are like, oh, you know, I need, I, it's almost like I need you to be there, Funk. Like these are the things I hear, uh, you know, in the past. It's like, oh, I can't stay motivated. I need you. You know, there's, there's been people in the past who've asked me to like, hey, Funk, do you do personal training? And I'm like, no, I do not do personal training. Like far from it. Um, will never do personal training. I just don't like doing one-on-one -on -one personal training. And, but I, but I said, but I have a program that's probably better than me doing personal training. Because if you came to see me to do, first of all, if you wanted to pay a thousand bucks an hour to come see me, uh, to, for personal training, no problem. But for a fraction of the price, you get me every day as opposed to two times a week. Right? So you get me every day. It's a fraction of the price. And I give you everything you need. Now, now I need, I'm the type of person, and this is, this is the other one. I'm the type of person who needs someone there. Well, I've heard that before and I've fallen for that before. I'm the type of person who needs someone. Okay, let me, let's, let me train you. First week, show up Fr Monday, show up Thursday. Perfect. Next week, show up Monday, show up Thursday. Okay. We're two weeks in. Great. Next week. Oh, I can't come Monday. I got, I got work. Okay, cool. No problem. You know, we'll, we'll get it. Thursday. Oh, I came late. Okay. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I only have 30 minutes. Like I got my kids. I got to pick them up. Okay. Okay. Next week. Ah, oh, you know what? Fuck. I'm going on vacation. Hey man, I thought you needed someone to keep you motivated. And it was the personal training that was going to do it. See how that doesn't work. Cause that happens all the time. If you're a trainer, you can attest to this. So what did I do? I send them daily emails, almost like me being there with you. Nope, not enough, not enough. So all of these excuses, right? There's always excuses. There's always, I'm this type of person. I'm not willing to change. I need this, you know, putting up as many barriers as possible to, for, for that person, for you, if you are struggling 
right now. You need to sit down and listen to this. You need to actually sit down and listen to some hard talk. But doesn't it's not going to be a hard talk. It's going to be something that you can take and apply, and it's going to work. So knowledge isn't enough. You have everything you know. I know and you know. You know what you need to eat and what to stay away from. You know that you need to exercise. You know all this. So it's not the knowledge. What we need is the application of that knowledge. That's where we get the power to change, right? But what's going to stimulate that application of knowledge? Because if we know, if we all know pretty much in general what we should and what we shouldn't eat, we all know in general that we need to exercise. So what is the stimulant that we need in order to apply this knowledge? Well, the stimulant is your why. That is the number one reason why you struggle to be self-motivated. The number one reason why you can't stay consistent is because you don't even have a why, if not a strong enough why. And you've probably heard this before. You know it's been out there. I know Simon Simic kind of was like one of the first to really go um, viral with this um, many, 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 many years ago. I've been using this God knows how long. Like, I mean, I don't know, 20, 30 years. I mean, I, you have to, like, as, as, a, as a, a, a professional athlete, a high-level athlete, Olympian, a professional athlete, um, your why is, is you, may not, you may not go through the process that I'm going to teach you today, but you always have a strong enough why because the difficulty it takes to go through physical, mental, emotional, like all of that difficulty to accelerate as a professional athlete. And if you're in a sport, where I was in a sport where it, I had no like coach, like I was in a sport where I had a coach. And of course, you know, the coach is going to be a strong why, but you need to have a strong enough. Why are you going to excel? Or are you just going to be part of a team or you want to be the best on the team? And then I played a sport, which was a professional beach volleyball where no, there's no coach training you every day. There's, you got, you're the one, like, you know, I remember when I, I partnered with James Olenek, here's a story. James Olenek, if you're listening to this right now, I love you, buddy. Um, we had some amazing times, uh, you know. And so I remember that that one season, I think it was even before the season started, um, James and I would get up early in the morning. So we, I had no job. This My job was beach volleyball. So I could have, like everyone else, show up to the beach at 4 or 5 o'clock and train for three hours because that's what most people did because most people had jobs. But we didn't do that. We got up and we had our secret training with like Frank Blasey and Mark Dunn. I'm throwing out all these names here. And we would train uh, in the beach in Toronto, like in way far away. It would be by the washrooms or I think that's what they used to call it. It was by the washrooms. But far, far away, set up the net like 7 in the morning. Actually, it was before. It was like 6.30 in the morning. Every morning during the week, train for an hour and a half. Those guys would go to work. James and I would go home. I would go home, James would go home, and then then we get on our bikes and we go to the gym and we train at the gym. And then after we train at the gym, go home, sleep, eat, go back down to the beach for afternoon session, train the beach, and we may even stay for the for the for the like evening session where everyone's there. And every single day. I didn't have to do that. My why was there. Wanted to be the best. So when you look at people who are high achievers, like I look at my wife who, you know, goes for these promotions at work and the process is grueling. It's grueling. It's like months and months and she has to give up everything, everything that she loves because her why is that strong, that nothing is going to get in the way. There are people who can, who can do that, who develop that. But then there are people who don't have that in their DNA, I shouldn't say in their DNA. Like they just don't have that or have not been able to ignite it. But you can ignite it. You can stimulate it. Because, you know, we've all set goals, right? We've all tried to start a new habit or quit something. And we lose no mo motivation, right? Like we, we start something and all of a sudden throughout halfway through, we end up back at square one, right? Because we don't have a strong why. Our strong, our why was I want to quit smoking. Well, okay, I want to quit smoking. All right, I'm good for the next couple of days. What then? It just becomes too overwhelming. Where you work, there's people smoking. Where you're walking, there's people smoking. 
you miss how smoking. It's a behavior that you like to do. Maybe you get a book, but just quitting smoking is not enough. I want to lose 20 pounds. All right. Well, I got to go to the gym. Okay, great. First week you go to the gym. Everything's cool. You've got great, you know, you got, you got your, your, your workouts. You got Funk's workouts. I'm great. I'm going to the gym. I'm getting them done. It's awesome. Then you get sore and then you miss Wednesday. And then you go to the go to work, and Brenda comes in with uh, with the freaking with the uh, muffins, and you can't say no to Brenda's muffins, right? Brenda's got great muffins, and next thing you know, you're back because your why's not strong enough. Without a powerful why, you're gonna fall prey to distractions. You're gonna lose sight of your goals, and you're gonna give up when the going gets tough. One hundred percent. None of us are strong enough. None of us are strong enough to consistently go through. All of the things we need to go through to get to our goals, unless we have something powerful enough that will keep us focused on our journey, that'll help us stay motivated, stay consistent, and driven for goals. Whether it's fitness related, whether it's what you're eating, or it could be any area of your life. But I want you, I'm just before we get going deep into this, I want you to think about a time in your life because you have ignited this at some point in your life. I know you have. I know if you're listening right now and you're a, guy, you're a man in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 100%, there was a time in your life, whether it was to, uh, to, to, to uh, you know, whether it was you, you were getting a job, whether it was in university, uh, whether it was writing your SATs, whether it was whatever it was, whether it was uh, applying for uh, to become a firefighter or, or, or what have you, whether it was getting your driver's license to drive a truck, whatever it was, you had a, the power of something. You had a why that was strong enough to keep you from falling to distraction so you could reach that goal. But you've just suppressed that or you didn't, you didn't realize that that's what that was that helped you get through all of those tough times. So it's in you. That's why I say that everyone has it. Some people, it's just ingrained. But you don't even have to freaking, they already know. Like, like you don't even have to tell them. They, they, just, they, just, they just know. Other people, you can just kind of like give it a little push, a little ignition, and then, and then again, it's always there. Like my son is like that. You know, my son is like that. Now, this guy, his why is, is, a, is the things that he's gone through because he has a strong why gets him through so many things that most people would quit. But he didn't have that before. I just had to kind of ignite that. And, and, and I had to teach him, okay, this is, you need to have a why. And this is what's, what, what I'm going to teach you today is what I taught him. And he, I mean, he's, he, I can't say enough incredible things about that, that kid, that child, that man. He's incredible. Absolutely incredible. What he did and how he did the process of him from the time he said, I want to go to Thailand to saving up, uh, you know, to go to Thailand, to getting on a plane for the first time. He's never been on a plane before. Never. I mean, I'm going to have him on this podcast to talk about this whole journey. Um, it, it is, it would be a great podcast for those of you who have kids um, that, you know, that a trip can, will completely transform their lives. He is a man, period. Like he can do anything now. Whereas before that wasn't the case. So, you know, everything he did, all of the, all of the trials and tribulations that he went through while in Thailand training, training, just, just the training part of it at a place where, you know, he's not, there's no one there to like, to, to say you got to go train, but training two times a day, going for those runs, getting beat up in the, you know, with these crazy, amazing Muay Thai champions. I mean, that's a whole story in itself. And then, and then looking the way he looks. And then when he came back, he was literally a new person, literally a new person for the good, understanding life, understanding his purpose. Anyways, science backs all of this up. The importance of having a strong why. There was a study that was in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. It had individuals who were able to connect their daily activities to a larger personal why, right? And they were more likely to see all of those activities that, that contributed to their long-term goals 
keep them and enhance them and keep their motivation and commitment going. Right? So the ones that had the strong why were, were able to connect with their daily activities. So the power of why extends, and, and the power of why extends way more than just motivation. Because when you have a strong why, it's going to give you like a, it's going to give you a compass and it's going to guide your decisions that you make. It's going to help you set your priorities. It's going to keep you aligned with the ultimate goal, right? So the strength of your why is, is, is a directional proportion to the success of your efforts, right? So it's directional. It's going to give you direction. And then you're always going to set new whys. You're always going to, you're never going to start something without, without having a why. Once you do this, and once you see how successful it's going to be, you're going to be like, oh, I mean, this is all I had to do. Because the stronger your why is, the greater chances you are going to achieve your goals. It doesn't happen 100%, right? And it's going to take some time. So you may have a super strong why, start your fitness training, right? Start your fitness goals, and then all of a sudden, you know, stop for some reason, and then you just need to be re- uh, reminded about that why and you get right back on. So there may be hills and valleys, but after those, the first time, the first couple of times you use this, you go through the process, you're, you're, you're always going to stay focused. You're going to be one of those laser focused people in your forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, no matter what it is, but let's talk nutrition. I mean, let's talk, sorry, let's talk workouts, right? Because the journey isn't about finding a new diet plan. The journey is not finding a new, what's the new popular workout it's about discovering your why, okay? But, but what does that mean, right? Like, like I talked about it being your purpose. I talked about it being the reasons behind your actions because your why is going to be the reasons behind your, behind your actions. It's going to be the driving force that's going to take you to your goals and it's going to be the backbone of your motivation. I know it's a, I said it's more than motivation, but it will be the backbone of your motivation. But it's a deep-seated reason for why you want to do something. That's generally what your why is. It's a, your, your why has to make you cry. That is what I say to all the guys who come into my program because the first thing they do in the program is find their why. The why is going to be what keeps them motivated because when you're doing something that's, when you have to change, new habit, new, your move somewhere, new job, it's very, you know, a new certification course you're going through, a new school, um, you know, new workout program. It is difficult because you're not used to it. You're constantly outside your comfort zone. The learning curve, the am amount of information is going to be overwhelming at first. All of the, it happens with everybody. No one goes into this big change or tries something new or tries to stop, stop something and it's like easy peasy. No, it's the opposite. It is very, very difficult. Right. It's very difficult. And us as men, you know how we always say, you know, we have to we have to like, you know, I can't show my emotions. I have to be tough. I have to, you know, I have to show that I can do this and that. You know what? You quitting all the time, you saying you're going to do something and stopping, you not being able to stay on a nutrition, workout, health plan, you always getting injured because you're not focusing on mobility. That's the epitome of, of not being a man. Not, not like, I don't want to share my emotions. Like, that's, that's the bullshit part. Like, if you can't do all that other stuff, if you can't stay consistent, if you can't stay self-motivated, if you can't stay outside your comfort zone, oh, this hurts too much. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I'm not used to doing this. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, this person cut me off. I'm so pissed off. Oh, it's this person's fault. Oh, I can't eat because my wife brings home all of this crazy food. Oh, my kids got too much junk. So I, it's, that's the reason. Like if that's all that bullshit happening, you're not really, you're not living up to being a provider, a protector, and a procreator. So you can't use the yeah, you know, us guys, we have to stay, you know, I don't, I, I got to protect my, you know, ego. I'm like, hey, man, you can't even fucking stay on a regular freaking workout plan. Like, who are you fooling? Who are you fooling? So you really need to sit back and go, you know what? Totally right. Like, I'm, I'm not, if you're in your 20s and 30s, I get it. But 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s? Come on, man. It is difficult. So you've got to be able to embrace difficulty. 
It's not difficult to not share your feelings. You're just wiping it under the rug. It's difficult to actually face the reasons why you want to change than actually do the work and stay consistent. That's what men do. That's what real men do. They fight through adversity. They stay motivated when things aren't going their way. They get up when they fall down. But all of that comes from having a strong enough why, because you can't just do it on your own. It's, it's not sustainable. You can't white knuckle, man. It's not sustainable. You're going to be absolutely a horrible person to be around. So when it comes to your fitness and health goals, your why is going to be really important. And, you know, like, 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 for instance, perhaps you're experiencing, you know, you start a new, you've done this before. You start a new fitness routine, you start a new nutrition, but you start to lose steam over a few weeks or over a few months, right? Or maybe you're stuck in the cycle of making progress only to fall back into old habits. I knew somebody in my program who he, every single year, he used to start the year off amazing right start the year off he i think he did dry january and then he did great in february great in march you know got, got lean lost weight got you know muscular feeling it and then as the as the months went on started to lose fall back right fall back in old habits going out drinking with his buddies not showing up to the gym not really focusing on nutrition and then by the end of the year he would be a, flat, a fat blob. And this would happen. This cycle happened, I think he said, six, seven years in a row until he joined my program. I'm not trying to promote my program, but it was the why that helped him, right? Like he started it again, but then I remember him telling me that he had a why that kept him going. Like he had, he went deep because do, going year after year, like thinking, think about this. When you start something, you get shredded, you get ripped, you feel amazing. And then literally, Jan then you open up your eyes and it's F December, January, and you're a fat blob again. It's like, what happened? And But when you're living that cycle over and over again, that's a cycle of failure. That's a cycle of failure. And it starts to play on your mind. It starts to play on your mental health. And it also becomes harder for that cycle because it's going to get tougher. You're not going to, you know, maybe the first three months you get shredded. The first time you did it, maybe the third time you did it, it took five months to get shredded until you fell back down. But it's going to come to a time. It's not going to be the three, four months. It's going to be the six, seven months before you get shredded because you're getting older and older and older. So I'm, all, I'm saying this just to say that, you know, these scenarios sound familiar to you, I'm sure. Right? I mean, it's happened. It happens to all of us. And because that's a, the, the crucial element that is not there is the why. So identifying your why is going to help you to literally revolutionize your fitness and health and your life, specifically if you've never used this before. Because it's not just going to motivate you to start, like I say, but it's going to, it, it's there to help preserve your journey when challenges arise, right? So... Let's start off with why this matters, specifically as we age. Why do we have to get this why, right? Because I've said this before, it's gonna keep you going throughout. It's gonna help you to live a longer, healthier life, 100%. You're gonna be a positive example to your family and your friends and the people around you because you're, you're gonna be the person who always hits their goals, <laughs> right? You're always going to, hit your goals and people are going to see the journey that you took. People are going to be like, man, this guy, I can't believe it. He still got up and went to the, to do this, or it didn't matter. We were all at this birthday party and he used to drink all the time. And there he was, he wasn't drinking and he wasn't, he didn't have cake, but you know what? He was a, the happiest guy at that party. He was so much fun to be around. It was amazing. It was like a new person. He took care of everybody at the party. He was cooking. He made sure everything was great. Like, that's what happens. And people see that. Like, how does he do that? So, you know, as we enter 
all of these decades, you know, our 40s, our 50s, our 60s, our 70s, we have a unique set of challenges that span more beyond, you know, belly fat. Like there's a lot of physiological changes. There's a lot of hormonal changes. There's a lot of psychological changes that go on as we get older, right? And so things like metabolic, our metabolic rate slows down. Usually that's a lifestyle thing, right? Because we're not doing the things we should be doing. But when our metabolism is slowed because of our lifestyle, whether it's eating, not working out, um, eating the wrong foods, we're going to gain uh, weight and we're going to lose muscle because we also suffer from sarcopenia, which is a natural loss of muscle due to aging. So we're losing muscle mass. We're losing bone density after the age of 30, maybe 35. But that is going to compound the older we get. And I'm talking about people who, who aren't consistent with their training, right? If you've been like, and consistent means three to four times a week at the gym and then two times doing some type of recovery. That's, that, that's what I mean by consistent. I don't, I don't mean like, oh yeah, I went for a month and I didn't go for a month and I've been on and off and I'm kind of doing a workout and I do it once a week. Like that's not consistent to me. That's, that's literally what, the, why you need it. Why is basically what that is. But, you know, and then we have all these health concerns, right? Like we have all of these things, heart disease, type two diabetes, uh, you know, high blood pressure, cholesterol issues. All of these things come like front and center because we haven't worked out regularly. We haven't had a balanced diet. We haven't done the things to prevent and manage these conditions. So we end up going to the doctor and getting prescriptions and then living on those prescriptions because we still haven't dealt with the problem. We're just trying to band-aid whatever's there and then we just stay on it. And then in the end, we're just a shell of ourselves. We're just a blob because we haven't focused on why I had this issue in the first place. And then we have increased stress. You know, the responsibilities that go on and the stress that happens. I get it, man. I have three bit companies. I have 30 people I have to take care of. People, people bought, have bought houses, literally have bought houses because of, from working with me, working for me. And so I, they still work for me. So, you know, there's a lot of stress and responsibility to bring revenue into this company to make these companies successful. Plus I've got a wife, plus I got kids, plus I got a family, plus I got my own health. Plus I have other responsibilities that I have to take care of. And I'm not an, an anomaly. You have the same thing. You got careers, you got finances, you got family, you got all the crap that's going on in this world. And you have the moniker of being, being the man, the patriarch. Because no matter what, you are going to be the pa patriarch of, the, of your family as you get older, just with age, whether you want to be or not. So you need to be in the best shape and health you can, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, period. It's not late. It's not too late. You can start in your 50s, you can start in your 60s, you can start in your 70s, but you got to get there. So all of these challenges are happening, which right off the bat, there are a lot of things in there that you could use for your why, but your why is not going to be, that's not going to be strong enough. Your why is going to be the North Star that's going to guide you through these challenges because you could be suffering from all of this stuff. Your metabolism can be super, super slow and doesn't matter what you eat. And you, you know, you're 60 pounds overweight and you're big and puffy, uh, you know, and you, you, you find it very difficult to build muscle. And, you know, every time you go into the gym, you get injured, you get injured at work, you know, and then now you got, you got heart, high blood pressure. So now you got to take a high blood pressure pills and now your doctor says you're pre-diabetic, right? And then now your wife is looking at you because you're, cause you're a fat blob and your wife's like, hey man, you know what? I go to the gym and I'm getting a personal trainer and his name is Funk Roberts and he is shredded, he's jacked. And yeah, I just like going to the gym and he's my personal trainer. It's not gonna be Funk Roberts, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be Condridge. I think I've used that name before. Condridge, the personal trainer who's, shredded and great looking and tells your wife or your girlfriend how great she looks every time she comes in because she, she does look great because she takes care of herself. That's stressful, but that's reality. You know, 
That's reality. You don't think you don't think um, your wife, if you are in a situation right now where you are completely out of shape and you know you're out of shape and you're trying your hardest, you're listening to this podcast episode right now and you're like, listen, Funk, I honestly, like, I, I really, 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 really want to get back in the shape. Like, honestly, like, just, just, I've tried everything. I've tried different workouts. I've tried all this. I've tried paleo. I've tried fasting. I've tried freaking keto. I tried everything and it's not working and i now i've got an it bum shoulder from from back in the day and you know so the, i can't do certain exercises and my knees hurt and you know like i really want to get in shape i've got this really big belly and uh, you know my dingling doesn't work very well and my wife on the other hand well she goes to the gym she looks great she goes out with her girlfriends you know not not out to the club but just goes out if you're in that situation you don't think your wife talks to her friends about how frustrated she is that her husband's out of shape and, you know, moping on the couch and no motivation. And that's not the guy I married. Barry, that wasn't the Barry I married. Barry that I married used to go to, you know, he used to go to the gym. He used to play hockey. Barry was, uh, was, was the, you know, this good looking guy who was driven and had motivation. It was self-motivated. That, that's, that's the guy I married. I, this isn't the guy I married. This guy here is a totally different guy. Right? But we know Barry's in there. We know we just got to peel the onion to get to the core of Barry. Barry, you just have a lot. This is just a made-up name, by the way. Barry, you just have a lot of things you're, you're dealing with right now. So you need help. Right? You need help. The Barry that she married is still there. So she can't see him because it's covered up with all this bullshit that's gone on that that's happened throughout your your last 20 years so with all of this stuff like i said when your metabolism slows down your why is going to remind you of the benefits of staying active when your muscle when you can't build muscle or your muscle starts to decrease or your bone density starts to decrease your why is going to push you to prioritize resistance training and weight bearing exercises and go to the gym. Okay, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta go again today. I'm sore, but I gotta go again today. When when your health concerns arise, your why is gonna highlight the most important part of your life, which is leading a healthy lifestyle, so you can prevent further uh, disease and manage that disease and reverse it in many times. And when stress and responsibilities are weighing you down, your why is gonna bring balance and perspective. And it's going to encourage you to take time for self-care. So your why is going to have multiple roles in one journey. Because in the face of all these challenges, your why is going to transform your outlook. Your why is going to transform your approach. Instead of giving up, instead of woes me right? It's going to help you stay positive and focused and know that, hey, listen, I may be here now, but I know that in four months, I'm going to look different and feel different. And that health, my health is going to get better in six months, in eight months, in one year, in two years, in three years, because this is going to become a lifestyle and you're going to continuously change that why. Okay. So I hope you understand the power of the why because it lies in the ability, okay, for you to turn all these obstacles that you're going to face one million percent into stepping stones, into milestones. It's going to help you reach your health and fitness and nutrition and workout goals. And it's not just about surviving, right? Because when you are in the survival mode, you, that's white knuckling. But if you're in the thriving mode, that is the best place to be in life when you're thriving. So Angela and I go to, used to go to Thailand every year. We used to run a retreat, probably going to run a retreat next year, 10 day fitness retreat. Amazing. Like not just fitness, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fitness. And then it's cultural. Like, like you learn, we take you everywhere in, in Shalong and Phuket, like all of the temples and 
the night market and Big Buddha and we go to an el uh, elephant sanctuary, but like a real good elephant sanctuary, not like on the side of the road up the big up Big Buddha. You know, you go to fights. We take you to one one year there was a uh, uh, Loy uh, Cron Loy Loy Someone's gonna help me with this. Loy 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 Cron. I can't even remember what it was called. It was a festival though where you light a candle and put it in the water, like all these things plus training with the Funkster and, 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 and Angela, uh, Mrs. Funk. But one year we got there and it was torrential rain for three days straight. If you live in, in countries where it's a rainy season, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, it's not like it rained a couple hours. It rained 24 seven, but it wasn't just rain. It was torrential, like it was downpours. So we got there off and we're like, okay, okay. But we didn't realize that. And, and I guess this is not something that generally happens in Thailand at that time, because we go generally late October, November. But for some reason, these three days were mimicking the rainy season. You think that stopped Angela from going on 5K runs? You think that stopped Angela from training? No, we went on 5K runs for the two days that it rained, because we got there the day it rained, the next day it was like, okay, I gotta run. In fact, I think Andy filmed me running in the rain. We ran in the rain. Why? Because, hey, our why, so I, we realize that, okay, it's not gonna rain for the entire time we're here, but I wanna take advantage of being here and running so that my conditioning can be great, so when I'm training, I'm not casting myself. And hey, I'm going to train too. I'm going to run to the gym. I'm going to get soaked. I'm going to bring something extra. I'm going to towel off and train. Thrive in the storm. All right. How do we discover our why? Hopefully this last 28 minutes, you understand how, how strong your, that why is. Cause that, this is the number one reason, like there's no offense or buts about it. So, how do you discover your why? So the first step you want to do is you want to, you need self-reflection. Remember I said your why has to make you cry. That means you need self-reflection. You need to dedicate quiet time. It's quiet right now. You need to be uninterrupted. So your phones need to be away. You need to find a space, go for a walk. And then you got to think about what your core values are. What are your core values? What are your aspirations? What are your responsibilities? What brings joy, fulfillment, and a sense of purpose in your life? Because these questions are going to set the foundation of discovering your why. I know what my core values are. Very simple. My core values are health and fitness. And it's not because I have a fitness business. I know thousands and thousands of people who have fitness businesses in some way that health is not their number one focus money is their focus um uh, you know they have other things it, it, it's not their own health but for me it is in fact that was our one of the vows in our in our marriage was we need to keep each other healthy and you know if if one gets out of shape or 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 you know struggling with health we can tell them hey hey listen man get your fat ass back in the gym like that's that was our marriage our vow and to this day 12 years later that still rings true. Nothing trumps our health. So you go through those questions. Then you ask yourself, step two, you ask yourself, why? Why do I want to lose weight? Let's pretend that you want to lose weight, right? I got to lose 40 pounds. So you got to ask yourself five times because I want to lose 40 pounds. You've had that why I don't know, countless times. So we know that that's not strong enough. Why do you want to lose 40 pounds? Perhaps the answer is I want to feel better about myself. Okay, why do you want to feel better about yourself? Well, you know, because, you know, I got a wife and she looks great. And, you know, I see that the way she stares at me isn't uh, always, you know, she's staring at me a lot different than she used to. I don't know if she's falling out of love with me. I also have uh, two kids and I'm really finding it difficult to keep up with them as, uh, you know, the, when I get home from work, I'm, I'm too tired. And then they are running around. And when they see me, they're so excited to see me. But 
I mean, I'll get up for a bit and then I just can't, you know, I just can't do it. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just, I used to have six pack abs and I just feel horrible about myself because I feel like I'm a failure. Right. You just keep, you keep asking why. I mean, I went through the whole details, but you, you get, you'll get to that point. And then once you get to that point where, okay, you got a strong enough why your why is man. Every time your wife looks at you, you, you see that she's looking at you in a way that almost of disgust, almost of disgust, right? Listen, we're, we're going, we're going right to the heart. Number two, every time you start playing with your kids and then you're like, Hey guys, you know, you guys keep going. And then when they say to you, Oh dad, come on. It breaks your heart because you literally cannot go any further. You literally can't play anymore. Like you physically don't have the fitness level to do so. So that breaks your heart. So you don't ever want that to happen. You want your wife to look at you looking amazing. You want, you, you know, your kids, you know, that's so disappointing. Every time you look in the mirror, in fact, you haven't even taken look at, you haven't looked at yourself naked in 10, five years because you know what's there. And when you look down, when you're taking a shit on the toilet, you can't even see your penis. Right? Like those, those that's deep. But that, that's the motivation. And, and you got to go take off your shirt and, and take off your pants and literally stare yourself in the mirror. Look at the front, look at the side. That is a very powerful visual why. Visual. Because step three is visualizing your why. Because visualization is a powerful tool. I, I learned visualization. I was very, very fortunate as a 15-year-old kid to learn the power of visualization. Literally, every single, three times a week, we went through visualization routine. And then, you know, in the season, every single weekend, three or four times, we put that visualization into action. And it worked. Because when I was 15, Coach Bugarski, may he rest in peace, taught us, visualization literally 15 year old boys playing volleyball lying on the ground after practice and him taking us through the whole sequence i learned that see i know that sequence inside out i've taught that sequence because i've used that sequence literally i did not just use it i've i use it today i use it today i use it before i have to present things i use it i i'm all i'm man i am so grateful to be able to say that, that the the power of visualization the things that i do that people cannot believe, like people who are close to me know, like, I can't even believe, how did you do that? I just visualized it and did it. Like, I don't say that out loud, but you know, that's what I'm, I'm visualizing. I don't even, I don't even, I generally, I'm a, I guess because I have, to, you know, my testosterone levels are high and, and I, I, I'm driven. I don't really like, you know, I'll weigh out op the options and I'll weigh the pros and cons. But if the pros of doing something is maybe too, more than the cons, I'm in, specifically if I want to do it. Anyways, visualizing yourself having achieved the goal. So after you ask your why and the process, the self-reflection, self-reflection part of it, step one is about going to the mirror and taking off your clothes and staring at yourself and looking at yourself from the side and looking at yourself from the front and then imprinting that in your head and saying, I never want to look like this again because this is killing me. Boom. Ask why five times. Boom. Now you want to visualize that why, but you want to visualize achieving the goal. You want to visualize yourself being ripped. In fact, the very first time I went through this really big transformation, I used a fitness guy. I used a fitness expert and put him everywhere where I was living. I, you know, I think it was in my, in my office. And I looked at that picture because that's the picture I wanted to, to look like. That's who I wanted to, to look like. So, and I visualize it all the time, right? That, that, so that's one thing. But you want to visualize you achieving that goal. Visualize how it, does it feel when you visualize and see yourself. Like, so visualizing means you're, you close your eyes and you pretend you're looking, you pretend you're at the drive-in theater. Right, so my eyes are closed, and now you, you're at the drive-in theater, and there's a massive, massive screen, and then you see yourself on that screen achieving the goal. That's what it is, and you you need clarity too while you're doing that. So you gotta, you're literally gonna watch yourself 
as you take off your shirt and you got ripped at six pack abs and your wife's like, oh my God. And then you, you go, kids, let's go outside. Then you take them to the park and you're literally running laps with them until they can't keep up with you. Then you visualize yourself going to the doctor and your doctor looks at, oh, this is a clean slate of health, man. Good job, my man. Like, like literally, because you want to visualize what you can do that you couldn't do before. And how is that going to impact your life? How is that going to impact the lives around you? Well, it's going to impact your wife because she's going to fucking feel like she got back the husband that she lost. It's going to impact your kids because your kids are going to look at you like Superman. Oh, my God. But I had another guy in my brotherhood. This story always gives me goosebumps. On one of our coaching calls, he said to me, you know, Funk, I took my kids to the park. Or I took my son to the park. I took my son to the park. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of other kids at the park. And, but it was hot that day, so I took off my shirt. And there were three other kids there, and they were like, oh, my God, look at that guy. He's like, he's, you know, he's, I'm sure they didn't say he shredded, but look how muscular that guy is. And the kids say, yeah, that's my dad. And the look on that kid's face, according to the father, literally brought tears to his eyes because the kid was so proud to tell those other kids, that's my dad. It was incredible. Those moments are priceless. That's the impact of you. Now, you don't need to get a six-pack, but of you getting in shape and them watching you. You know how many times I've been told in this, in my Over 40 Alpha Brotherhood program on coaching calls, where I remember one guy told me, he said, you know, I was, I was, <laughs> he said, my wife and I were upstairs and my wife and I are downstairs and we all we're hearing this like bumping upstairs. Like what the hell is going on up there? Like, is he playing? Do they have a son? So he's like, okay, I'm going to go in and he looked, he opened up the door and his kid was doing push ups and burpees and squats because his dad does push ups, burpees and squats. Powerful. So now that you visualize, this is going to, reinforce how important your journey is. So if it's whatever it is, workouts, whatever, that's the reinforcement that your why is going to bring you. And then you got to craft that why statement, right? Like now that you've dug deep into the motivations, you've, you know, now it's time to craft that why statement because you got to write it down. You can't keep it up here because it gets lost up in your head. You have, when you write something down, it, it, it brings it out of the darkness, right? Cause the darkness is in your brain. You need to put it on paper because when you put it on paper, it's there. It's out of your brain. It's on paper. It's in the light. It's right there. You can look at it all the time. It's got to be clear. It's got to be concise and it's got to be compelling. And it needs to make you cry. I told you that before. Your why needs to make you cry. It's got to get emotional because it's going to act as that guiding star during all the challenges. It's going to. So now that you have your why, let's, let's take a look. I, again, I had a guy, Robert, Rob, Robert is a, a software engineer. He's 45 years old. And I remember he was trying to get fit for so many years and he tried all these diets. He tried all these fitness programs. He had personal trainers and nothing seemed to stick. It would be great at the beginning, but he'd lose some weight, but he just gained it back within a few months. And so he was literally frustrated and I told him about the why. Like he joined the program, told him to do the why, and he followed the steps that I just outlined. He literally did all the steps. He kept asking himself all the tough questions because it was tough for him. Why did he, why do you want to get quit? First time, why, sorry, why do you want to get fit? His first, his first answer was, you know, I just want to look better. Same thing I said. And then he kept asking why again, and he kept asking why again, and he kept asking why again, and came up after he said, he's always been a role model to his younger brother and his younger brother was diagnosed with type two diabetes. So his, when they were younger, right? So he's 45. I think his brother was in his, his thirties, but they always like used to work out together and what have you. And then, you know, Rob fell off, Robert fell off, what have you. So he, that was number one. The other two was to, to be more like, he's a single father. 
or no, no, he's not a single father. They're broken up. So he has his kids once in a while. So that's the other thing, like showing, you know, his kids being a role model for his kids. You already felt shitty that he's, the kids are broken up, but now he needs to really step up and be a role model. So he realized that he wanted to set a positive example for his brother who he felt like he was losing, right? He wanted his brother to see what's possible in his 40s because his brother was in his 30s. And he also wanted to be that father to his, his kids, a role model. So with that powerful why, like he had a whole sense of motivation. He said the motivation was crazy. Like whenever he felt like giving up, he always remembered the brother. That was the biggest one for him, in fact. When he felt like skipping a workout, when he thought like, you know, he, he, he goes skip a workout, nope, the why guided him. And this why, the more he used his why, the less he had to use his why, if that makes sense, right? Because the more you do that, you just stick with it. It becomes a habit. It becomes an instinct. And now Robert's got the six-pack abs. He's like 48 or something. He's lean, he's ripped. And his brother is in the program. Now, this is not the Rob you may be thinking of. This is Robert, who's 45, a software engineer. But his brother is also now training, is also now motivated to get healthy, just like his brother, right? So like Rob, like Robert, when you focus on your why, it's going to be an anchor. It's going to keep you grounded. It's going to be a light that guides you. It's going to be a force that propels you forward. It's going to help you stay on that journey, 100%. And this is how you use the why. Because now that you have a why, right, you're going to take the time. And it takes time. It's going to take you, I don't know how long it's going to take you, but you got to get it. Because once you get it, specifically for the fitness journey, and you're going to use it. And the real value, though, is when you have to use it, actually. Because you're going to use it. It's going to happen. It's not if it happens, it's when it happens. Because right from the beginning, once you have a strong why, that, so it all depends on where you're at. You may be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to this podcast episode, and I don't have a workout program or whatever. I just need to get a why. But that why now is going to propel you to take the first step to actually finding a program, to actually committing to a healthier lifestyle, right? It may, you may go to a gym. You may hire a personal trainer. You may hire one-on-one -on -one training, like 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 literally one-on-one -on -one training or commit to a, a healthier diet because we need help. Like the why is great, but the why will guide you in the direction that fits you. Some people need that one-on-one. -on -one. Some people need someone that they can text every day, right? They need something. They need that. That's going to keep that. That's not going to be their only motivation though, but that's what they know that they need that in order to kickstart and stay on this healthier lifestyle journey. Other people, they just need the program. But it's going to drive action, right? Your why is going to drive your actions. So it should guide your decisions. It's, it should push you towards your goals. Even the small steps. When those small steps align with your why, it'll help bring significant progress. So for instance, I told you that Angela and I, our... our core value is health and fitness. So our life revolves around our health. Our health doesn't revolve around our life. Like we don't sacrifice our health and fitness for what's going on in our life. Everything that we create is created into our healthy life. And, 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 you know, for me, I, I, I have three companies. I work from home, but Angela does shift work. So she, she shows anyone because people are, well, you work for most easy for you. Angela has three different shifts. What she does is like the, the epitome of, of like, like what she sees every day, what she does, um, and, and how she needs to lead. Like it's, it's, so we talk about stress. We talk about the sleep patterns. We talk about all of these like struggles, all of these barriers like, you know, constantly changing the shifts, having to meal prep so that you're never without the right healthy food when you're at work. Um, you know, work sometimes working 30 hours because of a, a certain situation that happens in the city. So you gotta, you gotta work that. Like no one's job, unless you're doing the same job. I mean, I can't see another job that's difficult. It's a difficult, difficult, difficult. What you see, and then 
her status at and her position is of as a leadership position. So the 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 people you have to manage and the pressure, like life and death pressure, in some cases. But nothing trumps our health and fitness. That doesn't even trump it. So resilience when you face adversity. So when Brenda comes in and she brings the muffins, your why is going to be strong enough to, to not give in to those muffins, right? When you're struggle, struggling with motivation, when you're facing setbacks, things aren't working as fast as you want them to, um, you just keep reminding yourself of your why. And that's going to keep re re reigniting your resolve. You know, when, when the going gets tough, the workout gets tough, the stuff at work gets tough, you may have got an argument with your wife. Like, it doesn't matter because when you remind yourself of your why, it'll provide you the courage to persevere and stay consistent um, despite whatever barriers or challenges or obstacles that you're facing. You'll continue to just keep, keep the, what's your why, man? What's more important? Your why is like the most important thing because if your your why will aside from your health it'll also gear towards the people around you right so that's why it's so important and then your why can will encourage consistency remember i said like you're going to keep going to you're going to keep using your why but then after a while it's going to inspire you to make those healthier choices and maintain the workout and the exercise and even when the progress is slow, but it's just going to be a consistency. Okay, I realize I just got to keep going. Because listen, if you keep doing the right things over and over again, you will get results. The reason why you're not getting results is you stop doing the things that got you there. You stop, you know, you, 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 or, or you're only doing half of it, right? Oh, okay, I, I was eating healthy and, and working out. Now I'm just working out. I'm not eating healthy, so I'm not really getting the results. Like if you continue to do it, no matter how slow, it's a marathon, not a sprint, you will get results 100%. And it's going to reignite your motivation, right? Because there's going to be times where motivation wanes. Motiv like today, I, I'm not motivated to go to the gym and train because I know how hard the workout is. In fact, 80% of the time, I don't want to work out. 100% percent of the time, 80% of the time, I do not want to work out. Because I know that I got to warm up. It's going to be a long warm up because I can't just go in and work out. I know the workouts that I do are freaking difficult. They're hard. They hurt. They're challenging. And if I have to shoot it, then I got to shoot it. And I got to set up everything because I got to record it. And then I got to stretch after. I got to do abs. Like, that's not motivating. And it takes time. And time is money for me. So I'm not motivated. But I have to train period no if ands or buts about it and it's those times when i don't feel motivated and i end up showing up it's another building that shield of strength it's another piece on the shield it's also gonna be there for you to provide you know a measure to celebrate your success because each step no matter how big or small, is going to get you closer to that why. You got 40 pounds to lose. Now it's down to 30. Now it's down to 20. Now it's down to 10. The 10 is going to take the longest, but it's, you, keep getting, you keep getting closer to that why. And then it's going to validate your success because finally you're going to use your why to validate your success. Look at how my wife looks at me now. She freaking loves me. Look at the way these kids can't believe I'm running circles around them. Absolutely incredible. Look at me. I'm now taking pictures in front of the mirror and posting it on Instagram because I'm proud of what I did. And I showed that through adversity, adversity? Yeah, through adversity. <laughs> I said diverse. Through adversity, I was able to per persist and get it done. And now it's time to reassess and then redefine your why. Because that's what you do. You're always changing your why. Because now, after you lost 40 pounds, your why may be different. It may be, oh, now I want to try this work, this program, Metabolic Muscle 365, and I want to get six-pack abs. You know, the why of each one of you listening to this episode is going to be unique. It's going to be personal. And it's going to be connected to your life. 
but it's what's going to propel you forward in your fitness journey. It's going to help you stay consistent. It's going to encourage you to overcome obstacles. And when I look at all the people in my program, all the people in my life, all the people uh, at my school, all the people um, in the fitness industry that I look up to, all the people uh, in my life, family, that are successful and that overcome things, the common thread among all of these people where they had a clear why and it was meaningful to them. It provided an understanding of why and how important your why is for success. You need it for your fitness journey. You need it for your financial journey. You need it for your relationships with your wife and your kids journey you need it for your career you need it for you spiritually you need it for your health and fitness you need it for your social connections that you um, carefully look at you need it for your own mental health and clarity and and your own emotional state you always need to you'll have different whys for different things you'll be able to compart compartmentalize the why for certain things. This why I have a why for this podcast I'm I'm creating. I have a why for my next semester at Harvard. I have a why for the new program that I'm creating. I have a why for the reason why my wife and I go for walks or walk outside with the cats. Um, you know, our 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 self care. Like I have Different whys for different things. But discovering your why is going to be a transformative process for you. It's also going to help you with your, your fitness. It's going to, for the people who struggle with consistency and self-motivation and staying on track and always falling off and always getting back on it to fall off again, this is your answer. But you have to get deeply personal because that's going to compel and motivate you and fuel your journey. It's going to sustain your effort. It's going to lead to lasting change. Specifically through all the challenges that you will have. And here's the kicker. Once you finally get to that goal, you're going to use all of the times that you had to get over and, and you had to keep yourself motivated and keep yourself going through all the struggles. <clears throat> You're going to use that again and again for new challenges and new goals. You're going to say, well, I did it last time. Like we went to Iceland. My back was probably the worst that it, it had ever been my lower back. And yet we went to Iceland and rode horses, beautiful horses, four days across the Icelandic country. It was, it was unbelievable. We stayed in a small little hut. It was 24 hours of light, which meant that, and we didn't have any drapes in our, in our, where we stayed in our hut. The washroom, I had to wake up at in the middle of the night and literally, you know, it was rain, always was raining and cold and, you know, literally throw on my boots because the horses are all over the place. Walk down, walk over, go pee, walk back. Get back in the small little tiny room with the bed, all with my bad back, getting on horses for four hours, five hours, all with a bad back. It's hell. But I did it and I enjoyed it because I thrived. I didn't complain. I thrived. We thrived. And now we always say this like, hey, remember Iceland? That's not right. That's what we do. Hey, 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 hey. Remember torrential rain in Thailand. Those type of things literally bring, oh yeah, okay, okay, we've done that already. Okay, no problem. Hey, remember the three weeks we had to live downstairs in our house amongst every piece of furniture in this one, two, three, four-story house in one area. And we had to live there. We had to work there. We had to cook there. Remember? While they're redoing everything in the house, Remember? Yep, I remember. Then we can do this. It's going to sustain you. And it's going to ensure that you have 
long lasting success, not only in your fitness and health, but in your overall life. And the best part of it is you can then be the man and the father, husband, brother, son, who takes that tool and shares it with people around you. If you like this podcast episode, please share this with somebody. Give this a five-star rating, please. And if you want uh, an ebook, I'll, I'll create an ebook for you that will lay out all the things I talked about, the steps to creating your why. Go to over40shred.com forward slash discover dash your dash why. And your the book is either going to be ready for you for free or you just have to go on a waiting list um, until I finish it. <laughs> but you'll get it, all right? Because I love you and I appreciate you. And um, I do appreciate everything and I appreciate you guys listening. And please, please, please give this a five-star rating if you learned anything. And please share your story with me. Um, you know, send me a message uh, on Facebook or Instagram and let me know that if you s created a why, what your why was. And then, you know, give me, you know, let me know in one month, two months, three months, four months, how things are going, how amazing you feel and how successful you are however slow or quickly with your goals and your fitness journey i'm the funkster and i'll see you on the other side 